Good day, this is Pastor Lance Henderson of Our Savior Lutheran Church in West Columbia, South Carolina, and this is Daily Prayer for July 9th in the year 2020. If you like this video, just hit that like button down on the YouTube controls. If you want to share it, feel free to share it. Uh, if you want to subscribe to our page and get notified every time we have a new video out, which is a, we aim for five per week, um, just hit that subscribe button. And then every time you open up YouTube, it'll say, hey, there's a new video there for you to watch. We have moved from Genesis into <clears throat> Exodus, the story of Moses and the flight from Egypt. And, you know, if you remember the movie, The Ten Commandments, you know how the story begins, but I'll just kind of bring us up to speed. Worried about the Israelite presence in Egypt, Pharaoh gives the order to kill the firstborn Israelite boys throughout the land. Moses' mother takes her infant son, Moses, and she and his sister float him down the aisle in a basket, and he comes to the attention of the daughter of Pharaoh. And she brings the baby in and raises him in Pharaoh's, uh, in Pharaoh's house. So, he grows up essentially Egyptian royalty, and everything's pretty much going swimmingly for uh, the young royal, until one day he's angered by an Israelite slave being brutalized by an Egyptian. He raises up and kills the Egyptian, and now, to escape execution, he's got to run. And he runs out into the wilderness, and eventually comes across a man named Jethro, uh, who's a Bedouin priest, and things go well. He and Jethro get along. Jethro offer his, offers him work. Uh, Jethro offers his daughter. And so he marries Jethro's daughter and things are going well. It's a far cry from the, from the Egyptian life that he lived. He's nothing but a simple shepherd now, but he's married, he has a child. And so things might be boring and less opulent, but nobody's looking to kill him. And so, He's out there walking along and comes now to the point where his life and the mission of God are going to come together. And so that's Exodus 3. And so let's take a look and see what's going on there when God meets Moses. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is burnt, not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. It's a uh, familiar, construct in religious writings, you know, that, that to be in the presence of God is terrifying. If you think about the Christmas story, for example, the angels of the Lord, the glory of the Lord shines out from them, and the shepherds who see them are terrified, or as the King James says, sore afraid. Uh, there's a place in Genesis where Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, believes that she's seen God. And she says, this is it, I'm going to die. God says, calm down, you're not going to die. And then in other religions too, in the Bhagavad Gita, which is a Hindu writing, uh, it talks about being able to see Buddha or Krishna or Vishnu, Vishnu or Krishna, I can't remember which one, but it says, if the radiance of the thousand suns were to burst forth that would be like the glory 
of the Mighty One. That's a big thing, a thousand suns bursting forth all at once, right? Certainly be terrifying, if not just blow you to bits because you're a finite mortal and you're coming face to face with the uh, infinite. Um, and so it's a common theme and this is Moses' first time that he's got any dialogue, any, you know, thing to do with God in this story, really. He's an Israelite. He's raised an Egyptian. Uh, he's living this strange, different life now. He's on the, he's a guilty murderer. And so now all of a sudden, God, creator of the universe, is reaching out to him. And he kind of gets suckered in by something, you know, what's that, a burning bush? And as soon as he goes up, and I use my best Charlton Heston voice, um, Moses, Moses. So God's calling out to him. And when God introduces himself as the God of his father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses hides his face. Now it could be because he's afraid of the glory of the Lord. But we who pray sometimes don't pray because while we think we might want to know the knowledge of God or what God's will for us is, a lot of times we avoid praying because we don't want to find out that maybe we're going to have to take on more responsibility as God answers our prayer. Or maybe we'll have to let go of some responsibility as God answers our prayer. Because that's the way it works, right? I mean, you pray. Uh, most of us don't hear the voice of God, but suddenly you realize this is what God wants. That was uh, Thomas Aquinas' definition of the word hope, is that that's where we align our will with the will of God. And sometimes when we start in prayer, we know what God's will is. We know what our will is, and a lot of times they don't meet. I like being the person I am. Imperfect, matter of fact, some of my imperfections are awfully fun or something like this. And so it's a, it's a moment to perhaps we want to hide our face rather than participate in prayer. Our prayer today is the prayer for those seeking a deeper knowledge of God. Let us pray. Holy, gracious God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you ears to listen to your, for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us and his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.